There's a group of people who, theoretically speaking, didn't exist, lived in the margins. And uh, Vandana and I came across uh, one such person. She was showing signs of mental illness. She was destitute. And that kind of changed our lives forever. Because uh, these are people who, um, well, you see, but your mind refuses to accept. They live in the borders of society. Nobody really cares whether they live or not. They just exist. And that's why we started the Banyan, and that's why the Banyan has its um, subtag, I exist, therefore I am, means that you still have the rights to everything else that you would have. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, uh, uh, showing symptoms of an illness or not, uh, rural, urban or anything, it's the same rights for everyone. She was the ignition of the events that would unfold during the course of the next weeks and she was a reason why the story has to be told. When I encountered her for the first time, she seemed lost and she was not able to connect to her environment. She was clearly in a bad shape. Her earlobes were torn open and the flower decoration in her hair had wilted, which I felt was a sign that she must have been on the street for quite a while. After witnessing people passing by for hours and rather ignoring her presence and condition, I finally made up my mind to intervene. I approached two bystanders and asked them to talk to her. She wouldn't respond in clear sentences, but she understood when one of the men asked her whether she was hungry. We brought her finally to the police station, where I hoped that her circumstances would progress. One of the police women drew my attention to the woman's abdomen and told me that she seemed well advanced in pregnancy. Finally, it was decided 
that she was to be taken to the Institute of Mental Health. While we were driving, doubts overcame me. Was it right to interfere with somebody else's life in such a drastic manner? What initially took me a short time of making a decision ended up in literally rewriting her life. And not only hers, perhaps also the life of her newborn. After conducting and estimating her mental state through mental health care professionals, we finally admitted her to the Institute for Mental Health in Chennai by late evening. Recording inside the Institute of Mental Health was not permitted. I therefore was not able to record the shocking activities inside the ward. I drive to the outskirts of Chennai to learn more about an organization which apparently established itself as a pioneer in the mental health care sector. I have to admit, I am still a little bit skeptical after the previous incident, but I am willing to be disproved. Once a mentally ill woman is spotted on the street, she will be picked up and brought to the banyan. Arrived at the banyan, the rescued woman receives the first medical treatment. Before joining other residents, she goes through a whole medical examination and the personal hygiene is taken care of. Women who are rescued from the street have very often not only mental illness, but also physical disabilities and permanent injuries, partially caused by the life of the street for many years. The Banyan believes that mentally ill people, like all human beings, have the right to be treated with respect. Watching the staff and their relationship to the residents, it becomes evident that the co-workers are emotionally committed to their work. Responsible for keeping residents moving through their daily routine and for their proper intake of food and medicine, the healthcare workers have the most contact with the residents. Therefore, they are trained to have perfect interpersonal skill and to be prepared to handle every emotional crisis and to meet the residents' physical and especially emotional need.